This video is going to be a guide for how to complete Oryx challenge mode. If you've never done hard Oryx, which is what me and my friends are doing right now, there's not really a big difference between hard and normal. Obviously the light jump up, but the only difference is knights will be spawning with your ogre. So for example, let's just say first plate is front left. Your knight is going to spawn after you kill your ogre and it will spawn opposite of you, diagonally of your plate. So if your first plate, your knight's going to spawn opposite side. And let's just keep going down the line. So second plate is going to hop up second. Once you kill your ogre, your knight will spawn opposite of you. So once you kill your ogre, you're going to have to flip around, locate that knight, keep going. Third plate, again, opposite of you and fourth plate opposite of you. And these knights, you got to be quick to take them out because the second they spawn, they're going to make a beeline for your orb. They're going to start sprinting the second they spawn. They're not stupid like the vessel and then just going to kind of bumble and wander around. They're going to take off. So you need to make sure to take them out as quickly as possible. So this is just going to be an actual clip showing you the knight spawning and whatnot. So I'm helping my friend there on second ogre. This is third ogre. And then after I kill third ogre, I'm going to flip right around and my knight, like I said, is spawning opposite of where you're at. So I killed my ogre. Here comes my knight. He just spawned in and now he is down. Here's another example. I'm up front now just to give you an idea of kind of where the knights are spawning. So the knights in the back, they're spawning basically behind the plates, whereas the knights in the front are spawning way in the corners, front left corner and front right corner. It's pretty easy stuff. I mean, they're not ultras or anything like that. They're just regular knights. So the challenge for Oryx, you need to take him from 100% health to 0% health. It takes 16 orbs to kill him. So you have to detonate all 16 together. You can't do 14 and then two or, so you have to do all 16 together. And I guess some people have actually done this strategy already. So maybe you and your friends have already done it a bunch of times and this is gonna be super easy for you. I personally guessed that it was gonna make you have to have a different runner every time. And no, it's not. You don't have to have a different runner. It's only you have to detonate all 16 orbs together. 16 orbs kills them if you haven't done Oryx at all. It's 16 orbs is what you need to do to kill him. And it's not too bad. There are moments if you're you know, inconsistent with getting your knights, that can be troublesome because they can go and since you're stacking all the orbs on, on each other, you know, they eat one, they're going to eat them all. And the fourth ogre can be kind of a pain sometimes. And, you know, if anybody that's done Oryx, the, the friggin' ogres, when they start teleporting and everything like that, that can be a real pain in the ass, especially when you're trying to do the 16 orb strategy because the orbs need to be generally close to each other so they're kind of overlapping. If you have a stray orb here or there, that's perfectly fine. You just need to make sure that you detonate all 16 together. That's the only thing because you're going to have those two extra players. You got, you know, one player for each plate. They'll detonate, th detonate those orbs that are near the plate in the corners. But if you got an ogre that kind of squeezes out and that's not overlapping, you got two more players that can go and get obscure mines. And I would suggest if you do have an obscure mind to probably send a warlock for that one because they can always self res. And yeah, it's pretty simple. It's not too bad. It only gets really annoying if you have the ogres teleporting and your mines aren't really matching up. And you don't do bombs phase and don't shoot oryx. You don't have to waste any of your ammo on him. All you got to do is stun him and then you're basically just chilling here and waiting for him to rotate back to the mid. So you're going to be doing a baby oryx three times. So you're doing a total of four runs for 16 orbs, but you got to do baby oryx three times. So you're just doing oryx, little oryx, uh, an extra time. That's it. So you're not having to do bombs or anything like that. Now, obviously, let's say a knight goes and eats an orb or the vessel grabs an orb or something like that. That's perfectly fine. You can do another run. You just got to make sure that you have 16 orbs to detonate. You can't have less. And I think believe my friend was saying if you detonate more than 16 the game crashes so it needs to be 16 orbs now if you've never done oryx at all ever i have a walkthrough you can go watch that if you'd like to if you've done oryx a bunch of times i don't think this challenge is going to be too difficult for you guys if you're familiar with the mechanics of the fight it's not going to be too bad it's just basically hoping you don't have ogres that are teleporting all over the place and people are surviving, you know, the first two shades or whatever. I mean, you can have people die. That's perfectly fine. It's just going to make it harder to kill ogres and kind of keep them corralled in the corners next to the other orbs. So basically what we did is just, you know, three on the plates, two up top. 
I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that strategy. And yeah, not much to it. I just cut ahead here to our last stun and then we're going to be detonating the 16 orbs. It's not too difficult. Like I said, it's just keeping those ogres, keeping where you kill them consistent so the orbs are overlapping and there's no, there's no orb in a really dangerous spot. But again, it doesn't really matter if you have one that's not overlapping because you have people that can go and cover up an orb that might be off by itself. So here we go. This is our last little stun. You're getting 320 stuff from doing it on hard. You're getting 310 stuff from doing it on normal. You'll get your 50th calcified fragment, which will lead to a shader. You're also going to get a ship. I do not know if the ship drops on normal, but it does drop if you do it on hard. And yeah, that's about it. You'll see the rewards here in a second. We're just blowing up the 16 orbs right now. If you have people die, that's perfectly fine. You're not going to need six people to stun them at the very end. And you can kind of see there his health was full and now it's at zero. Just as long as you do 16 orbs, you will complete the challenge just as long as he goes from 100% to 0% health. My bad, I was super late getting this video out. It's not even Oryx challenge mode anymore. It's on War Priest, so this won't even be up and for another two weeks. So my bad if you were waiting around for it, but I'm sure there's a gazillion guides out there on YouTube. So he's dead. You'll see it pop up in a second. Your last calcified fragment. There it is. You're also going to get the ship. Again, if you do it on hard, it might drop on normal. I have no idea. You can kind of see here, I get the 320 helmet. You're, you know, you're getting your artifact and crap. But if you're doing challenge mode, you have a gazillion of those things now. Like you need another 320 artifact. Anyway, hopefully the video was helpful. Have a good one. See ya.